Right, <clears throat> welcome back. And uh, it's been a lovely flight. It's had a lovely sunrise, beautiful orange sunrise. The um, the view over Africa. Who'd have thought Africa was so green and verdant? Who thought Africa was a as a continent was short of water? Then just take one look out of the window here. Look. If you thought that it was short of fertile soil, space to grow crops, forests, worry no more. Africa is blooming. At least the next plane ten it is, as far as the eye can see. So we are still on course. Uh, 72 miles away so we should be thinking about starting our descent because 25 multiplied by 3 is 75 so we should be starting to descend about 75 miles out so let's go down let's go down oh well we're not cleared down to anywhere so we can't go down let's clear ourselves down a bit and then go down that's it, 800 feet a minute. And what I'm going to do is clear ourselves down to Africa's pretty flat and we're flying to the coast so I'm going to clear us down to about 7,500 um, at um, about 1,200 feet a minute will do. I'll do it, yeah, we've got altitude select in there which is fine. We're going straight in now we don't want to overspeed, so let's pull back on the um, power. I need to watch this. I don't want to go past the barber pole in terms of uh, speed. So I'm bringing it right back to a thousand torque. Let's have a quick look. That's pretty. That's going down very, very slow. Now I can probably, I can see that you probably can't. Uh, let's put our new found tail floodlight on, why not? Now in the meantime I found a couple of things out let's just put you on the Google map this is where we're going into Abidjan here's the uh, airport, it's Airport Felix Hufwe Buanyi and it gets 4.1 out of 5 stars, so it's nice, then we're going to enjoy ourselves here and as you can see there are there's a single runway and it's 0321 now let me bring up this another excellent website I found sky vector which we can put there and here it is Abidjan this is the um, instrument uh, approach now first of all we can see it's got a, a VHF omnidirectional rangefinder VOR uh, pretty close and if we look at the uh, let's look at airports again let's just go back I think there's a sort of a summary here yeah if we look at the VFR chart um, and you can see here here's the VOR 114 decimal 3 Let's just make a note of that because I'm absolutely hopeless at remembering anything. 114.30, so that's the VOR. And then if we come in from the north, we're going to come in down runway 21. Runway 21. So if we head for this non directional beacon, NDB here, 306 and fly over the top of that I reckon we're going to be pretty well on on track here we could fly down the VOR so we might try and do both and I'll show you the um, the two ways that you could line up so let's assume that we're going to land down to the uh, to the south and then um, what else do we need to know well I mean obviously in real life we'd need to know things like the approach frequency 121.10 APP and then um, tower and everything but um,
they've got uh, these are the navigational aids you can see here if they're three letters they tend to be VORs and if they're two letters they tend to be NDBs but here it's got a two letter VOR you see that hexagon inside a square it means a VOR uh, it means a civilian VOR there are, there are TACANs, the military VORs have different symbols and here it's got the VORs, there's one which is on the 207 radial and if you look at the runway you'll see that the runway is at, on a, a heading of 208, 208 degrees so that's been deliberately designed hasn't it to be 1.8 miles from the end of the runway um, and then this one here the uh, AD radial now is that the one where you want AD AD oh let's go back we didn't want that one to the VOR no we want the AN but AD is the VOR AN is the is the NDB that we want so let's go back again so AN AN here Abidjan is a bear, on a bearing of 027 degrees and again the, the runway is 028 so again it's it's coincident with the the runway so and these are the bearings from the center line the center of the midline of the runway and it's about two miles out open to the public that's always good useful because um, um, you don't want to land at a military airfield likely to get air, airplane confiscated and arrested don't know what the prisons are like in Cote d'Ivoire probably not that brilliant anyway we've got all the information we need so let's get back in the plane and start doing some dialing so the NDB is at the speed, yeah, speed's alright. The NDB is here. For a non-directional beacon, we want to use the ADF, the automatic direction finder. And we want to dial in 306. So let's go down to 30 and the small digit 6. So that's 306. Now what instrument will then point to the NDB? And the answer is this one here. If we set it to ADF, Automatic Direction Finder, it is now pointing towards the NDB AN on 306. And the other thing is the VHF, Omnidirectional Range Finder, the VOR, and we said that was 114.3, didn't we? So let's just push to swap between the COM and the VOR and let's set this to 114 smaller digits are 3 bigger digits go down here 114 make it the active frequency and then if we push this to nav this will then point to the nav so there we are, there's the nav and that's the NDB or this is, yeah, this is the number 2 isn't it so what I'm going to do is we could set we could set one of these to the NDB and one to the VOR so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the second one, the big one to the VOR and the way to do that is literally to set this one instead of this one so we want this one to be set to 114 decimal 3 so I'm going to swap those over because this one is closer and I'm going to push here to push down to select it and then we just want to put the minor digits the minor the minor digits up to three three and then make it the active frequency and then go back around here and select that to nav and there we are so we've got the nav 2 pointing to the VOR on 114.3 and we've got the NAV1 box pointing to the NDB AN on 306 okay if you've got all that then fine if you haven't then don't worry just rewind it and and, uh, and do it all again <laughs> uh, actually I didn't actually find out if it's got an instrument's landing system because that would be useful if it does 
let's just check how we're doing on the distance. We've got 30 miles to go. We should be at 9,000 feet and we're not. We're at 15, so we're, we're far too high. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a circle round. The best way to do a circle round, we, we'd be directed to do a circle by um, air traffic control. I wonder if that's the wrong way there. And that's literally to press this. If you watch this heading bug, you'll see that if I press this, it won't move much, but it will align itself to our heading. And then we can press this so that we're flying that heading. And then we can move this to move the heading bug. I'll have to move the autopilot over to that side because I want to move the heading bug to the opposite of where we're heading. So we're going to fly back. And then I'll move this back over here. So in a minute we're going to want to put it back to the way we were heading. So now we're now we're doing a descending circle to the left. I'm just going to finish my coffee and give it back to the stewardess before we land. You can see the torque, the power's come up as we've descended and that hasn't helped on the descent because I should have been taking this torque off. I was at a thousand, wasn't I, on the power setting. So that I haven't helped myself there really. The reason why I've decided to do it now is because um, we're flying away from the airport and there's no point bombing away from the airport. It's all very well bombing towards it, but not bombing away. Let's have the landing lights on because we're down below 10,000 feet. No, you see, we're flying towards the tail, aren't we, of these. Um, the tail of these uh, lines now. So we're going to fly it with these, the yellow one we're going to fly towards. So let, but let's just supposing that we were going to do a, a VOR based approach. What we want to do, we want to fly to the airfield down this this VOR, wouldn't we? Down towards it. Now the, the, the angle that we're flying towards the airport is not necessarily the angle of the runway. We might be coming in at a slight angle to the runway. So supposing we wanted to intercept the VOR in such a way as to be on the uh, same angle as the runway. Well, the runway we've said is uh, 210 or 208 roughly. So we want to find the 208 radial in, don't we? So, and the way to do that is to adjust this thing here, this green thing here. Because that will select what radial we'll, we're going to follow. So it's this one. So, we'll set that to 208. And you'll see why all will become apparent in a minute. Now the other thing is, if we're going to fly uh, down towards a VOR, down a radial, and a radial is just a name for one of the lines that comes out of the middle, we're going to want to have this on a VOR. Or V-lock. In fact, it's changed the course there, hasn't it? So let's um, let's just set that course to two eight two o eight again. Can you see? Let's just just move that over so you can see that we're flying we're flying down down the line. So we can say we're flying.